y'all. What up, world? It's Radioactive Podcast. It's your host, Ace Boogie. And I have a special guest with me today, guys. Special guest. Introduce yourself, ma'am. Hi, my name is Kate Hines, you guys. Uh, Miss Kate, Miss Kate. Miss Kate, are you from San Antonio? No, I'm originally from Houston. I've been in San Antonio three years. Three years. And how do you like San Antonio? I love San Antonio. I just don't love the food. What? <laughs> well, I mean, what type of food are you used to? I'm used to that seafood, that uh, raw shrimp potatoes, and that sausage, that spicy food. That's what I'm used to. So, you, I mean, do you know how to cook all that? Of course. Ooh, y'all see that she can cook it in all, y'all. Okay. So, <clears throat> what all do you do, Miss Katie? Okay, so I am a business owner of Simply Kate Braiding and Weaving, LLC. Okay. I am a Herbalife distributor also, okay. and I am a motivational speaker. So what is Herbalife? What is that? Herbalife is basically um, nutrition, meal replacement shakes and teas that help you lose weight. It mm -hmm. also helps you gain weight, mm -hmm. and it's just a healthy environment. Helps you lose and gain. So these must be yes. two different types you will be taking. Yes, that is correct. We do have two different types. We have the one for you to lose the weight. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have the one for you to basically gain the weight, uh, the muscle. Hmm. Okay. Okay. And you use it yourself, huh? I do use it. Good. Life so you know you got some folks out there who, you know, have the product and they don't even use it themselves. Okay. Okay. Yes, I'm down 40 pounds from the product. Really? Yes. See, I mean, you take this like weight loss thing serious. I seen on your Facebook the transformation. Like, yes, I used for, to be for really re big and really lazy, but now I move around and it's it's really pleasing. Really? Yes. So you just like ah, I'm the shit now. <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm the shit, but other people think I am. Mm, ain't nothing wrong <laughs> with it. Y'all heard that? Huh. So, um, <clears throat> how do you become a motivational speaker? Like, do you have to get a degree in this or? Um, no, you don't need a degree because it's not like you're prescribing anybody, uh, you know, conditions or anything like that. But getting into motivational speaking, you have to want to help other people. Mm -hmm. So me getting into motivational speaking started off with just life experiences and what I went through in life. Okay. And now it made me want to reach out to help others. So was it a thing of everybody kept coming to you with their problems and you, were, you had all the answers in a sense? <laughs> or you made them feel better? Yeah, you can basically say that. Um, I do have a lot of friends that just tell me, man, Kate, you're so positive. Why are mm -hmm. you so positive? Like, if I'm around you, I get this light in the room, mm -hmm. or you just make me feel better about myself, and that's what made me want to help others. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. So, so that's pretty much what made you want to do it in the first place, right there. What really made me want to do it was my life experiences. So once I overcame my obstacles in life, it was like, whoa, let me go help other people who probably went through the same thing mm -hmm. that I went through. So that's what made me want to get into motivation. So off the top of your head, what type of obstacles really uh, shaped you to uh, today? Being a single mother for one and for two, just, you know, losing everything and, you know, finding your way back to actually gain it back. So once I went from all the way to the bottom and then built my way back up, that was an obstacle in my life that made me reach where I want to go. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What's going on here? Is it still going, Deidre? It's still going on your end? Is uh, that still going? All right, cool. Anyway, <clears throat> back to us. So how do you prepare for these when you, when you when you're about to speak, how do you prepare? Like, what's the proper way to prepare? Um, so basically, you just go in there. Um, as of right now, I don't have like you know major speaking roles or events, but right now I'm working on that. But when I go in and I get ready to speak, I just tell myself like, what is the message that you are trying to get across to the the crowd, the mm -hmm. audience? And once I realize what's the message that I'm trying to get across, I just go in with my head up and I'm focused, and it's just to get that message out. So, I mean, are these topics that you come up with, like, pre, like, how do you even come up with these topics? Like, how do you even? <laughs> I could be sitting at home and, like, I'll be like, you know what? I want to upload a video today. What I'm going to talk about. Uh -huh. And it'll just come off the top of my head. And I'll just think about probably a relationship topic or, you know, a motivational topic about mm -hmm. believing in yourself or anything in that field. And just say, you know what? I'm going to talk about that. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to put all my feelings into it. So I'm guessing you went to school for hair. 
I did go to school from here. I graduated from Milan Institute. Mulan. Okay. Was that the one on Walls? And which one did you go to? I went to the one off of Ingram. Off of Ingram. Yes. How many hours you had to do? We had to do 1,500 oh, hours. <laughs> 1,500 hours. Yes. So were they hell? What, you, what did the you hours. Say? Were those hours hell? It was him. Yeah. It was. It was <laughs> days imagine. I was like, man, I don't want to do this no more. Yeah. But I had to keep telling myself, like, you know what, Kate? Get your butt up, go to mm -hmm. school, and mm -hmm. finish these hours. So tell me, um, what type of styles, what is your most popular styles that you do today? My most popular style that I kind of dread on doing, but mm -hmm. I know that it's in high demand, is the goddess locks, the individual crochet. Mm -hmm. okay. So I get that constantly. Okay. Yeah. And then well, the next is the sew ins. Sew ins. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, what else do you know how to do? Like, just give me a little quick rundown. I mean, I do, you know, lace closures, frontals. I do braids. Like, so mainly everything that I do, it revolves in braiding and weaving. Mm -hmm. yeah. and how long have you been doing this? Um, I started my business in 2017 of May. So I'm a little over two years now. Uh, so, I mean, they could check out on your page the type of styles and the, in the, my fact, did you start off when, when your models, when you had your models, how did you even, you started with family first or? Well, when I actually started doing hair, I was actually in middle school and high school. So what I would normally do is just do people hair at my house. And I'm mm -hmm. telling you, I was charging like dirt cheap prices. Like uh -huh. my dad used to be like, I know you ain't been doing hair for six hours and you only charged them $40, but I swear. And then uh, when I got here, I just used some of those old models of what I did and my uh, mannequin. And I started posting pictures and people was like, oh, that looked good on the mannequin head. Oh, that looked good on this girl head. And that's how I got started in San Antonio. Word. Yes. Mm, okay. Okay. Is, is San Antonio showing you love or what? San Antonio is showing me love. When I say I do not want to move back to Houston in the field where so many stylists is there, I'm in the right place, the right market, and they all showing love. Okay. I'm going to go back on the motivational tip. What keeps you motivated because you say your friends say you positive all the time so what motivates you uh like i said it's really a hard obstacle but it's like a challenge like you at war with yourself mm -hmm. so it's times where i have i think about what i went through in life and i tell myself instead of sitting there moping about the pain embrace the pain so once i start embracing my pain that's what motivate me to go further yeah yeah Mm, okay, because since you was able to push through it. Yes. Mm, okay. So what's the do's and don'ts when it comes to speaking? When it comes to speaking, um, as far as the do's, it's just like be yourself. And then mm -hmm. you have to realize what audience are you trying to reach out to? Are you trying to reach out to only the children? Or are you trying to reach out to the middle crowd? Or are you trying to reach out to only the elderly? Mm -hmm. You know, are you trying to just reach out to just the Christians or religion or it, it all depends about the field that you want to go into. And then in my case right now, I'm kind of reaching out to mainly like the middle and the older crowd, mm -hmm. um, not the small children crowd. Um, as far as the don'ts, I feel like do not go into motivational speaking if you're not going to live what you are speaking. Let's not be <laughs> hypocritical now. So have you ever seen that? Have you I have seen. So that. what happened like? When I see that, it's like you see it every day on social media. Mm -hmm. You know, these people are talking like they live in a cer certain lifestyle. Mm -hmm. When in reality, when you meet this person in person, they are nothing like what they're talking so about. So they're a catfish. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me. I mean, if you want to say that, it's just like a catfish. You think you're going to speak to somebody that's mm -hmm. really fine and look really good, and then you see them, they look like an Oompa Loompa. So it's right, just like right. you may have a point on that, but yeah. it's really hypocritical to go out there and speak something that you're not living by. Mm. Okay. Okay. So what type of events have you done? Like, um, as of right now, I, this, my main event that I'm getting ready to do, mm -hmm. um, is a business networking event. Uh, the business networking event <laughs> will be October the 11th at seven o'clock. That's, that's a flyer for it. That is my flyer. Look at that. Is that you right there, girl? <laughs> that is me. Yeah, look, y'all see her right there. Y'all <laughs> Y'all see the number. Y'all see, been the tickets, yeah. man. Look, check it out. The tickets are only thirty dollars, and you hosting it too. Yeah, I am hosting. I am over the whole event. If you are a business owner or you looking to get into owning a business, this is the right event for you to be at on October the eleventh. Come out there and motivate and network with all business owners, man. San Antonio needs to be on 
We all need to meet each other and let's get it popping out here. Oh, look at that. <laughs> so um, there's different types of motivational speakers, correct? That is correct. So what, what type are you? Right now, like I said, I'm kind of like more in the middle field with the middle age group and the elderly group. Mm -hmm. So normally what I talk about is real life situations. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes you have the conscious motivational speakers that are more woke about what the world is going through. You have those political uh, motivational speakers. And right now I'm just more of a real life, you know, motivational speaker. Um, <laughs> have you ever had a time where you froze or messed up? Of course. <laughs> Tell me about it. I want to hear this story. Tell me about the first time you froze or messed up. Matter of fact, both. <laughs> As of right now, uh, I'm still just, you know, with the building my name and the motivational speaking, I'm just with the mainly uploading the videos. Uh -huh. But I could be in a video mm -hmm. and I just know exactly what I want to say. Mm -hmm. And then I get tongue tied. So I get the talking and I get the stumbling over my words. And I'm like, uh uh, let me redo this video. Uh, uh, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. I have to redo this video because when I deliver this message, I can't be messing up on the camera. Right, right, right. So, yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> okay. So have, you, have you ever froze? Uh, froze? No. 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 What would you do if you did? Like, what, what, would, we, what would you say to that person who has done that? Like, what, was, what should they do in that moment? In that moment, everybody always said, um, coming in, because I used to go to acting classes as a kid. Mm -hmm. And when you get on stage and you see these people, just picture them in their underwear. Now, mm -hmm. you're not going to be shy if they're in their underwear. You're going to laugh at them. Mm -hmm. So once you laugh at them, it's going to help you overcome freezing when mm -hmm. you're speaking to a crowd. So that's actually, that actually works? Yeah, it actually works for me. What? But I don't imagine them in their underwear anymore because it's like, you know what? I'm going to give y'all what y'all asking for if uh -huh. y'all going to like it or y'all not. And uh -huh. that's how I do it. Mm, okay. Okay. So um, how is how's the money in, in this career i mean have you have you got paid yet doing this or um as of right now no because i'm building mm -hmm. my platform mm -hmm. and once i get more uh recognition out mm -hmm. there in the marketing then mm -hmm. that is a great field to go into to get mm -hmm. paid but i have been looking on some of the highest paid motivational speaking videos and classes and stuff and that field is a great field and mm -hmm. you do pay a lot of money to come speak at an event and What's how money you talking about here? When I say a lot of money, I'm talking about fifteen hundred dollars up to twenty thousand dollars or more, yeah. depending on how high you get in the motivational speaking field. Oh my goodness! Okay, okay, okay. So I mean, your mother as well, correct? Yes, that is correct. So do you find yourself being <laughs> long-winded with your kids, like, because you are a motivational speaker, you know how to speak for hours? So do you find yourself being long-winded with your kids or even your friends? Um, when, and you already know when you do have children with my children, I give them the pep talk as mm -hmm. much as I can. Mm -hmm. So it's like, look, we finna go here. This is what mommy needs y'all to do. Do you understand me? Are you okay? I sit down and I talk to my kids mm -hmm. and when I um, talk to them, they mm -hmm. open up to me more. And I like that about that. So I always motivate them, letting them know they're beautiful every day. Right. Right. Letting them know that they're going to basically be be something in life. You know, if you sit there and you don't motivate your children, you are hurting them as well. So how important is motivating your children? It's very important because, you know, me being a child and where I come from, you know, I didn't always have that motivation that I needed. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes your parents do get too busy where they can't sit down and, and talk to you and motivate you. So no matter how busy your schedule is, sometimes you need to sit your children down and actually have that heart to heart conversation and motivate them because it helps them in school. When I motivate my daughter and I tell her, like, you're going to go to school, you're going to have a good day today. She has a good day today. Hmm. And that does work. So I don't, I don't, um, I actually sit there and I, I watch some of your videos, right? Okay. And you don't seem like the traditional speaker. Mm -hmm. You actually, when you say be yourself, you are being yourself. Like, you like Tiffany Haddish slash motivation, motivational <laughs> steep speaker. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, she ready. You know what I mean? Yes. Like. I like it, man. And it gives that, that real, the real feel like, yes. like, feel like you're talking to me and, and our people, exactly. you know exactly. what I mean? Um, does everybody accept you though? Like well, how, how do other know, folks accept coming, you coming you know, when, when, when you speak in the way you do speak? Okay. So like you said, about 85% is basically how you are. Mm -hmm. 
man, oh my God, man, I really needed to hear that. I feel like God sent you to send that message to me and mm -hmm. you relate to me when you speak. Mm -hmm. Now, there's always that other percentage right. other than the 85% because I did have, you know, top people on Instagram promote my video. Okay. So once I have them promote my video, I'm able to see the comments of other people from mm -hmm. different parts them of the United States. comments is ruthless. Right? ruthless. So, by me being down south, they focus on the wrong thing. You're not really focusing on the message. Mm -hmm. You're focusing on, oh, she talked country. Mm -hmm. Or she pronounced this word that way. Mm -hmm. So other than that, everyone else say that I speak straight facts. Mm -hmm. And I like to keep it that way. Mm -hmm. But then there's always that, that little percentage that just have something to say regardless of what you do. Well, I mean, are, are you country? I mean, you know, like, yo, if you meet somebody from Beaumont, oh my goodness. They sound I like, used to stay in Beaumont half of man, my life. Man, they sound like the people from King of the Hill. They I, sound exactly like that. I That's went crazy. to Lamar University as, um, as a matter of fact. But um, I will say I am country, mm -hmm. but I didn't realize exactly how I sounded until I started making videos are going live and played it back and was like, man, I actually sound like that. Mm -hmm. But deep down, we down south and this is Texas. So that's our accent. Ain't nothing wrong. You're right. Ain't nothing wrong with being country. <laughs> um, so have you ever spoken in front of somebody before? Um, yeah, I actually did spoke in front of someone. Um, in school, I used to always go, you know, in front of the crowd and mm -hmm. say things. I actually used to speak on the announcements and mm -hmm. say the announcements for school. Uh -huh. So, like, me speaking in front of a crowd is not a major issue for me. Has anybody ever fell asleep on, uh, fell asleep on you? Oh, no. My voice is <laughs> What would you do? What would you do? Somebody, you get a paper ball and just... Wake up. Like, what would you do? Excuse me, sir. I know you, <laughs> you see me here out. talking to you. You're going to call them out specifically. Exactly. <laughs> That's funny. Doing like the comedians do. I'm with you. Right. So um, when it comes to um, hair, is washing the hair included in your prices? <laughs> this is so funny because I see so many Facebook statuses that say back in the day, they used to always wash the hair before they do the hair. Mm -hmm. This is true. Mm -hmm. But now in this generation, with the styles that they are requesting, it does take a lot of time. So no, my prices are not including in, with yeah, it's not included with the washing, but I only charge ten dollars more to wash and blow out your hair. So So what's some important things for the ladies to know when it comes to you and your business? Um, mainly when it comes to me and you being a um a client, you're talking about clients or mm -hmm. okay. You being a client, um, it's best to build that relationship with your stylist. So the worst thing you can do when you are in someone's shop or you do have a stylist is to come with your hair just out of whack. Mm -hmm. You're not warning the stylist about how it is. You're not communicating with the stylist about your appointment. Because mm -hmm. um, the worst thing you want to do is to show up for an appointment and you have not spoken with your stylist that whole week of your appointment being booked show up and either your stylist don't do that style or your stylist don't use that brand no. yes and the worst thing you can actually do is to show up late constantly it's okay things happen life happen you can show up late maybe one or two times but if you're showing up late every single time it's about time for us to cut our relationship and mm -hmm. you no longer be my stylist because i'm very uh precise when it comes to your appointments because y'all do have clients behind you and if you show up late, you can mess up the whole schedule for the whole day. How the latest, the latest that I would take is about 15 minutes to 20 minutes. So don't be late. Yeah. How do you deal with tender-headed clients? Ooh, that's kind of hard to tell you. Um, to deal with tender-headed clients, I mean, if you want the style, you know, I try to lighten up my hands, but then you don't want to get too light, and then their hair is coming loose because then now you're the the suspect or you're, oh, the, yeah. you, you're, you're wrong the because you're the my hair is coming a loose, but mm -hmm. you told me that you're tender headed. So, you know, that's a give and take. Mm -hmm. Either you want this style. I can try my best to be as light as I can. Mm -hmm. But if you don't want, if you want this style to last, I'm mm -hmm. going to have to tighten up. I mean, they say beauty is pain, huh? That is correct. Mm. Have and you, then it's beauty is pain. Yeah. <laughs> have you, the hardest style for me to do right now. You said it was a goddess locks, huh? No, that's what I do the most. Oh, that's what you do the most. Um, the hardest style for me to do right now that I probably won't do is like those micro box braids. Really? 
I so are those are those are those just like micro braids or something, but just in the box? No, form? they're actually like box braids coming all the way down here, but they're like really, really small and they take hours. So that's the hardest thing for me to do because for one, uh that my attention span won't go that long. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. But you can charge more for something like that, huh? I mean you can. I've seen people charge up to seven hundred dollars, eight hundred dollars. Because it's that's hours of braiding. Mm -hmm. Hours. So, but it looks beautiful at the end of the day. It does, and it lasts a very long time. What about your your favorite styles to do? My favorite styles to do are sew-ins. Are sew-ins. Yes. So what type of things can you do with a sew-in? Um, with a sew-in, you can wake up and comb it out. You mm -hmm. know, you can curl it. Mm -hmm. um, you can put it in a ponytail. Mm -hmm. There's so much things you can do with a sew-in, and it lasts so, very long. So this is you just sewing in the hair, so whatever hair you got, and you just do whatever with if it. If it's good virgin hair, it will uh -huh. last a very long time. That's correct. How do you maintain? So what's the steps you, you use to maintain your client's hair and keep it healthy? Um, basically, what I tell my clients is you need to keep your hair moisturized. Um, I do have a small percentage of Hispanic clients, mm -hmm. so they do wash their hair more often. But with us black women, we rarely wash our hair um, because washing our hair so much dries it out. So we have to put a lot of oils and moisture in our hair. So I just basically tell my clients, keep up with your trims. Um, you get your trims every 12 weeks. Some people get them earlier than that. Is that dead ends when you say trim? Yeah, trim okay. your ends. Okay. Um, that helps your hair grow. Try not to put so much heat on it as well and wear protective styling. So once you wear the protective styling, moisturizing your hair and keeping up with your trims, it will help your hair. Can you explain to those who don't know what is a protective style? What is a protective style? A protective style is braids, a sew-in, anything that lasts a very long time that protects your hair from the heat, the damage, and you, you know, putting heat on your hair. So when you get a protective style, you're actually covering up the whole head of your hair. And that can be a crochet. So your hair is growing in the process of wearing that style. So are perms really that bad for you or... What's, so, your, what's your thoughts on them? So honestly, being a cosmetologist and having my license, the correct term for that is a relaxer. A relaxer, okay. A perm is what most Caucasian or Hispanic people get to get their hair curly or what your grandmother used to get back in the day mm -hmm. for the jerry curl. But the relaxer is what keeps your hair straight. And as of right now, in this society, we are not, we're straying away from the relaxers because we're going more natural and natural is more healthier for us. So, so with you losing all this weight, I mean, are you something like a trainer or something now or what? <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily say I'm a trainer, but I am a life coach when it comes to um, your weight loss goals. Uh -huh. If I can do it, anybody can, can do it. it. I seen you working out with like a whole bunch of people. I'm like, Yo, she takes this for real. Yes, that's actually my Herbalife family. Shout out to Sean Moore and Lisa. Shout out to Ebony Marie. Shout out to Sarah. Shout out to all the Herbalife family. Yeah, I love y'all. Shout out to Shania. And y'all better share it too since she Sh shout out y'all out. Yeah, Shania <laughs> is actually a great personal trainer. Yeah. So, yes, I really love my Herbalife family because they helped me through times where I didn't believe in myself. Really? Yeah, that is correct. So they helped motivate you. They the have motivated me, and now I'm here to motivate others. Uh -huh. That is correct. <laughs> so give us some exercises for us for those ugh, who need to lose some weight. <laughs> give me some 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 things I can do. Well, first of all, the fastest way to lose weight is eighty percent nutrition. Okay. So the rest is about the exercising. So as long as you change up your eating diet, you will lose the weight. Um, as far as the exercising. Cardio is the most important because it will drop your weight quickly. Quicker. What is cardio? Cardio is running, jogging, being on the treadmill, being on the elliptical. That is good for you to lose the weight. Mm -hmm. Then comes the, you know, the exercising and stuff because the exercising is mainly with building your muscle. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when, so I mean, other than cardio. Hey, little mama. <laughs> she should have came in and said hey to the camera. <laughs> she can't. <laughs> um, what else besides cardio? Uh, so cardio is like, you know, mainly just running up your heart speed, mm -hmm. jogging in place, mm -hmm. 
running in place, mm -hmm. running laps, mm -hmm. anything that jumping jacks, mm. high. So you don't have to be, you don't have to run. You can do these other things. Anything that speeded up to run up your heartbeat is cardio. Basically. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, um, as ah. far as the workout events, yeah, you gonna do like a group running thing, like we can all come out <laughs> and run with you. Ugh, let's do this, guys. I leave it up to my Herbalife Life family. Actually, every Sunday in University City, uh, mm -hmm. eighty one forty two Shin Oak mm -hmm. Road, uh, we actually have a free workout for the community. So if they anybody want to come work out for free, we are there in Universal City, and y'all can come out. Ask for Kate when you show up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so we talked about your October event. Um, are you nervous? You a little nervous about that? I am not nervous at all. And nervous will not be in my name. So when I y'all if y'all show out show up to that event, I'm gonna be there with a happy face, like, hey y'all, what's good? Thanks for coming to mm -hmm. my event. I appreciate it. <laughs> Ow. Okay, Ow. so so um did you put that together yourself or I did. Damn, I did. So you're like a promoter too. I mean, I mean, you in high school, oh, my God. I'm all around, you guys. In high school, you know, I had the little physique. You know, I was real cute, and I okay. knew a lot of people. So mm -hmm. the promoters would tell me, hey, you know, pass these flyers out, or we'll put you on a flyer, mm -hmm. and we'll give you a percentage if you get all these people to show up. So mm -hmm. I already had the um, experience of being a promoter at a very young age. What all does it take to put on an event? What all does it take to put on an event? Okay, so to take what all does it take to put on an event is for one, find a great venue, mm -hmm. find a great DJ, mm -hmm. realize if you're going to do food or not, mm -hmm. and the promoting and the marketing. Yes, so okay. you have to get your event everywhere out there, and the ticket sales is what's going to do the job of who all show up. Hmm. Yeah. Now, is there anything that I may be missing that you want to talk about? I mean, because I mean, I think we already talked about like where the where the passion came from, did we? Yeah, we did talk okay. about the passion. Just wanted to make sure before we get to my interesting questions. I mean, do you I have really anything? Because I got a film first, <laughs> and then I can <laughs> drop knowledge. <laughs> okay, so she got something up her sleeve, y'all. We're gonna be seeing her somewhere pretty soon. So y'all yeah, be looking out for her. Yeah, I will be seeing me pretty soon, but I won't give out any details to after I'm on film. Okay. All right. So, question. Sure. Do you prefer an alpha male or a beta male? Uh, then what are we talking about? Relationship? Relationship. <laughs> I hate to laugh on camera like that. But, uh... <laughs> she would have thought about somebody, y'all. She thought about somebody. Go no, ahead, go ahead. I thought about myself. Like, okay. Coming up and me dating, I was always told that I wore the pants in the relationship. Mm -hmm. And I was told that I need an alpha male in my life because I cannot be in a relationship trying to wear the pants and run the man. That makes no sense. Why wouldn't you just get a beta male so you can do that? No, because at the end of the day, I want an alpha male. I feel like I need a man okay. that's going to come and put me in my skirt. Uh -huh. And put me in my shoes. Uh -huh. So that's what I need. Why? Because it's it's hard? Pretty much it's like, it's why? not It's not hard, but at the same time, it's like, hey, I don't want a relationship where I can run all over you. I need you to put so me in So that's what the problem is. I'm going to ask you, what's the problem with the beta male? Is that what the problem is? Um, I don't want a yes man. You don't want a yes man? I don't want a yes man. You cannot be telling <clears throat> me yes all the time. I need you to... <laughs> Put me, your shoes on uh -huh, and put uh -huh. your, pull the pants up, and I need you to go ahead and get me in line. I must get it, y'all. <laughs> now, <clears throat> you say you want the alpha male, yes. right? Do you really understand what that consists of? Now, this alpha male, he's barely going to budge on anything. I mean, like, I really feel like women sit there and be like, Right, uh, right. Nine times out of ten, keep it real. Nine times out of ten, this alpha male is not going to compromise. There are a few things he will compromise on, but you get what you ask for. Alpha male is going to be just that. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be very few give in there. You're going to for sure have to be submissive or it's, it's going to be an argument every day. Like, I don't think women understand when they say they want an alpha male, they really don't want an alpha male. They just want a, a beta male that has alpha tendencies. 
Hmm, you may have a point right there. I'm, I'm just saying because now when you say alpha tendencies, what do you mean by meaning? That? He, meaning he can be alpha male when 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 need be. In other words, when it needs to be. That kind of sounds because like, I mean for real though because women, yeah. I think women be like, they sit there. I mean I don't know. I actually I hear women say all the time like, I'm not gonna be submissive unless he acts this way. I mean, have you ever said that before? Which is true, because I have said that before. What does he? What does he has to act like it's for you to be? It's not where he act like. It's like, can he lead the way? Okay. Can he be the man of the house? Can okay. he take lead? Period. Okay. When you say lead the way, I need some examples here. Lead the way means example like, like I can look up to him for answers. Okay. Not saying that I am a woman. It. I get the bag. I take care of home. Mm -hmm. I am that woman that take care of all the tendencies that I need to do as mm -hmm. a woman. Mm -hmm. But is that man going to be able to guide me a little bit? Mm -hmm. I want to be able to look up to him some. I don't want to be the one leading the way all the time. Okay. I want to be submissive to a man, but I have not met a man in my life that I could be submissive to. Mm -hmm. Now, so if you just a guy... Said it again. <laughs> If you're just a guy that really don't, that don't work, don't take care of bills, mm -hmm. like to sit around mm -hmm. and ain't doing nothing, but you want to turn around and be the alpha male, mm -hmm. not going to happen. Mm. <laughs> okay. So you said take lead. It was some other things you had named. I want to break down of all those. Okay. Run the household. How, how is he supposed to do that? Run the household means like, hey, babe, here go all the bills. Okay, babe, you ain't got to worry about that. I'm going to take care of the bills. Not saying that you got to pay all of them, mm -hmm. but you making sure that it home is taken care of so he's coming to you like okay baby is your half handled you know what i'm saying like well other words, he's being probably more gonna take care a little bit more of my half but uh -huh. he will take care of the majority of the household's bills so that was make a real man i mean, oh, I mean that's, that's what taking lead at the house you pay majority of the household bills <laughs> genius is tough i mean because the woman really does take care of the house more because it comes mm -hmm. with the cleaning and the cooking and mm -hmm. making sure the kids are okay, making sure the clothes are washed, mm -hmm. making sure the husband is happy or the mm -hmm. man is happy. So, but the woman does do that, but she still have to treat that man like he's the man of the whole household, the king. Right. Yes. But see, that's the problem. We're missing each other. He has to act a certain way in order to be treated like the king. So I got to, I got to make sure these men out here understand <laughs> He has to be a boss. Yes. Boss. Okay. Okay. He huh. has to be daddy. Oh, okay. God. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we got down, um, taking lead, mm -hmm. be man in the house. What was the other one? Um, my, my memory's so short, child. <laughs> I mean, think about the things that will make you want to be submissive. So he's taking um, care of the household. He's, 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 he's leading. He's, you're able to come to him. He's able to give you answers. So he has a little wisdom. That is correct. So, those little things, huh? I, I noticed with women, it's always little things that make him that make them like, yo, it's over. I left. You know what I'm saying? Well, like, first of all, if they leaving that fast, then they don't need to be dating. Well, it's it's not not that it's that fast, but certain things is just women don't like. Like, okay, I come home from work, woman come home from work, yeah. and yo, I gotta do the dishes. You've been at home all day. Little things, you know, or your drawers is on all over the room. Little things, like you know what I mean. And those little things come the big things, and then yo. That's it. <laughs> okay, she need a bathroom break. Bathroom. Oh, it's okay. So she gotta. Okay, so yeah, I get what you're saying when it's saying it's the little things that um that count in a man, but it's just like, like I said, it separates of me wanting to be submissive and me not wanting to be submissive. Mm -hmm. If you are not taking care of your responsibility as a man and showing me that you are a man, how can I be submissive to that? You can't. You can't. I can't. You can't. But now, if you're leaning on me for you know support or for me to be there for you and help you and you not bringing anything to the table ain't no way in hell i'll be submissive to that you can't okay i can't he works he works and he, he makes his money mm -hmm. um he still ain't there yet though huh he has to do more than just work and make that money i mean it's how you treat your woman you know so, so that's so that's yeah. the third one so how should he be treating his woman he should treat his woman like a queen. He should treat his woman like she's the only... What does that mean? <laughs> a queen? Oh, so I can throw roses when you walk? What does that mean? I mean? He don't have to do all that, but it's the little things that count. Like, you know, your woman wake up and 
you know, your woman wake up in the morning and say, hey, well, hey, baby, you're beautiful. Or she had a long day at work, baby, let's talk about it. Or mm-hmm. the affection, you know, the little romantic things. Like, don't just be in a relationship with your woman and mm-hmm. you don't give a damn about any of her emotions whatsoever. That's a problem. That would be a problem. <laughs> okay. 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 I like, did y'all get that, fellas? I mean, those was, that was pretty laid out. I like that. Uh oh, I think it's still going though. Um, so I have a question: Have you ever played played what's called the pop up game? No. Now I don't, no. you know what that is. I don't know what that is. So with the pop up game, that's you popping up on your man to see if he's doing what you said he what he said he was gonna be doing. <laughs> I have played the pop up game before. <laughs> you have. Yeah. Let me make sure this is still good. Okay, so tell me about that. I want. I want to. I want to hear about this pop-up game what happened <laughs> one day i was in a relationship this is about three to four years ago and the guy that i was with Did at the time, time mm-hmm. like he would stay at home majority of the time mm-hmm. and i was working so what i normally did um one day i left <laughs> i left and i told him i was going to leave okay but I used to have a front door and a back door. Okay. So he ended up leaving to go to see one of his partners or whatever. His that's friends. That's what he said. His okay. friends. This is what he said. Okay. And um, I snuck back in. I parked my car somewhere else and I snuck back in through the back door and I sat in the room and locked the door and just listened. Okay. And okay. Hold on, hold on. He said he was leaving the house. Yeah. You, but you said you was leaving first, correct? Yeah, I said I was leaving first. So you, you went back in the house. I okay. went back He's to still the, in the back house. door. Right, go, go. Right, go. I went back to the back door and mm-hmm. I sat down and he came back in mm-hmm. with his homeboy. Now I didn't know he was bringing people to the house. Okay, okay. But well, you threw me. I mean, you, you got me scared right now. You told me he came <laughs> back with his homeboy. Go ahead, go ahead. I mean, nothing bad practically happened, you know, so I kind of did a pop up for nothing, but he was in there, you know, talking about how I was basically complaining about him not having a job and kind of was going into detail with his homeboy uh, about how I was getting fed that up. That is funny. So yeah. He thought he was on some sneaky stuff. Yeah. He needed a counselor. <laughs> yeah. He needs some mental health help. Yeah. That is too funny. <laughs> So you got to be careful with those pop-ups sometimes because not all the time they're doing something bad. <laughs> so have you had to have you had a, to go ride with your friends, be a rider with your friends and, and go with your friends to do a pop-up? Yes. Yes, oh, I want to hear about that one though. <laughs> I want to know how that went down. Well, basically, um, recently I brought a guy to San Antonio who mm-hmm. I um, who I thought was going to be my husband, actually, because he promised mm. me the star, the moon, and everything. And okay. um, I had to help him get a job at a call center. And at the call center, uh, it's a lot of females, of course. Mm-hmm. So temptation is everywhere. When I thought he would be strong enough to fight the temptation, but he wasn't. The second week of the temptation was kicking his butt. The second week of being at the job. Well, he ended up, we haven't taken a little small break. And um, I kept having a suspicion. I say it was a woman intuition. Mm-hmm. I kept feeling he just was talking to this one girl because her, her number kept popping up in the phone and she was calling late night, late night hours and stuff. Mm. So I got my homegirl and told her to drive in one car and I drive in the other car and I park here, you know, and you park there. And then we're going to follow behind to see where he's going. Because of Mm -hmm. course he don't know anybody in San Antonio. So Mm -hmm. we need to find out what's going on. Mm -hmm. And, um, I ended up parking right in front of the girl car and I didn't know it was her car. So while I'm in the car parked, He's getting out for work and he's coming and he's walking with the girl to her car until he looked up and realized that I was parked right there. Oh, so so he didn't even recognize your car at first. He didn't see my car at first until he got to her car and realized that I was parked right there. And at this time, our relationship was practically over because he had already left the house for a couple of, you know, a couple of days so it was practically over, but he denied it and said that he was walking to my car. Get out of here. So he still tried to lie. <laughs> he tried to lie. What was his face? Yeah, I wonder what his face looked like. First of all, it was during what the head, my the facial head. expression Woo! was. It was like, well, damn, I already knew this was happening. Yeah. But, uh, but it was like, no, I was walking in your car, dummy. I don't know why you think I was walking with her. <laughs> Boy, you done walked halfway through this whole parking lot with her right by your side. And you're telling me that that's not who so you So she obviously with. knew about you then. She knew about me the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. How does that make you feel? 
it made me feel kind of messed up because I feel like it's women out here and I don't even know if I should call them women or whatever I want to call them, but they will sit there and know that the guy is in a relationship and mm-hmm. still have no respect to the relationship. But you can't really get mad at that woman. You have to get mad at your spouse or the person that you're talking to mm-hmm. because he knew that he had a relationship at the time and he knew that he was with someone at home. So mm-hmm. it's not even her fault. It's his fault. That is very mature of you to say that. It is very mature. So you so didn't, so you didn't, you didn't, uh, what pass then? I wanted to. Oh. <laughs> I wanted to, but I was like, you know what? I got a lot going in my career. And you know what? At the same time, I don't even feel bad about it because I've got some phone calls to Texas trying to come back, but ain't no coming back. Um, with that being said, is once a cheater, always a cheater? I think that is true. Really? I think that is There's true. There's no coming back. It's no coming back because, I mean, if you did that and you was talking to not even only her, it was multiple girls, it's kind of hard for you to slow down. You're going through a life crisis right now trying to find yourself. So I'm going to let you find yourself while I'm finding myself and we're not going to find ourselves together. (laughs) (laughs) We're finding ourselves separately. We're going to find ourselves separately, actually. Don't even let me know when you do find yourself. You stay over there. (laughs) Yes. That's funny. That is is funny. (laughs) You okay? Okay. Yeah. It was. <laughs> um, I'm gonna be honest. No, a man does not have to make more money than me. I'm not picky whatsoever, but I have to see that that man has an effort and dedication of what he does. Now, me being a business owner, I may try to ask them like, hey, babe, do you want to try to make more money or let's find a better feel? The only thing about it is a lot of men have a lot of pride issues mm-hmm. and they probably get in the way if they woman is making more money than him. So it's, it's him. It's not. It's nothing. really him. It's yeah, not so me. you don't think it has nothing like that. that type, that's like, a, it's like, you know, what I'm trying to say, y'all, that has nothing to do with the woman. Like the woman doesn't think anything. She's OK with having. It all depends. I can't speak for every woman, but I do know for me, it doesn't matter to me because it's like, hey, if we're together, we're one. And if I'm successful, then my babe is successful as well. I got a good one for you. (laughs) Oh, I got a good one for you. Okay, now the woman that throw it in a man's face really don't need to be in a relationship because that's right now at that point, she really don't have any type of understanding when it comes to that man and she's putting that man down. So how can that man be better if she's mm-hmm. putting him down constantly about what he makes and what he brings to the household? Just be happy that he's bringing something, something. to the household. <laughs> so is it cool to say that woman's, she would be a bitch? Huh? Would she be a bitch? Would be cool? Okay to say that. I mean, I don't want to use that word. Technically <laughs> she's being a little overrated at okay. the point. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, okay. I can go with that. Um, who is this a good one? You ready? Yeah. <clears throat> Bring it. So, I've talked to folks. Okay. I talked to uh, a young lady one time, and she told me, she was like, you know, this guy I used to date, his penis was small. That's what she said. <laughs> oh, my God. But she said when I was in a relationship with him, I didn't even notice it. She was in love. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I've had, I've had, I've had, look, I've had other women, <laughs> you know, who weren't, the man may have nutted up, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But yet they were still just as satisfied because they were in love. That's correct. How is it? Because for men, <laughs> let those things be off for us. That, that's it. <laughs> so how is it that with women, y'all can do that? Like, is love really conquer all? Like, uh, Yes, love yeah. does conquer all because it's how a person treats you. Now, you could be so caught up in how they treat you mm-hmm. that certain <laughs> things about them their flaws, you can't see it. And it's called being blinded in love. So I have been blinded Mm -hmm. in love where this dude can have so many flaws, but they are perfect imperfections to me. So at that point, if he have a small, you know what, I'm not concerned about that. Hmm. But hopefully he's working in another area. Oh, oh, yeah. (laughs) yeah, yeah. That is crazy, though. Yeah. How are y'all able to do that? That's like it's just in y'all genetics. Exactly. Exactly. That's just true. Exactly. That small one might do some things to you. Yeah. So size doesn't matter. It size doesn't matter to me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't speak for it's other. It's the motion in the ocean. You know? <laughs> 
um, let me get your social medias, please. Uh, my social media, um, my regular page, you can follow me at Kate Hines. That's my main personal page. But mm -hmm. my motivational speaking page is Kate underscore speaks. This is my IG and my Facebook is K-A-I-T underscore speaks. S-P-E-A-K-S. Uh, my IG for hairstyles is simply Kate underscore hairstyles. That's S-I-M-P-L-Y. K A I T underscore hairstyles. Follow you, me, you guys. Yeah. I do follow back. Do you do uh, home visits? No, I do not do home visits. I cannot be driving all around San Antonio and get caught up. The best way to find me is in my shop. Which is location? What's the address? The address? I don't want any stalkers out there now. Oh, the too late. <laughs> too late. <laughs> The address is 6322 Severin Drive. Now you have to find a suite once you contact me. <laughs> ah, look, she good, y'all. She good. No stalkers. Yes. Y'all want to hang out outside and see you. I see her walking. Have, have you ever had a stalker before? Ooh. <laughs> I have had a stalker before. What? <laughs> How'd you handle that? Yeah, tell me about that. How'd you know he was a stalker? How'd you handle it? Where is he at? Uh, <laughs> where is he at? I really don't know where he's at, but... um. <laughs> I was a little younger okay. in my younger days, okay. and mm -hmm. it was a. Well, right. I'm not that old, you guys. I'm about to be 27, but it was more than almost. She's just a baby. It was about 10 years ago, but mm -hmm. I was uh, talking to this guy who I ended up getting physical with, and uh -huh. I ended up inviting him to where I live. Mm -hmm. And actually, what happened after that? I just stopped talking to him and calling him. And, um, oh, I so you hit it and quit it. <laughs> oh, 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 that's what you did. I got five brothers, what you expect. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. But yeah, so um, at the time I was going to a neighborhood, like he had never been to that side of town, right? And um, I was going to a neighborhood park by uh -huh. my house. Oh, my and he goodness. was sitting there at the park, actually in the pool, swimming oh, and everything. And I didn't understand goodness. what he was doing on this side of town if we're no longer talking. You, you ain't going to leave me. Over here. <laughs> so he ended up pulling me to the side. And he told me, he was like, hey, you know, I'm almost up here for you. But I'm sitting there like, what are you up here for me for if right. you're not talking? Right, right. That, that was just I creepy. I dropped you. Like, you didn't get the hint? That was so creepy to me that I just... I did not talk to him after that. Like, I literally did not go to the park for a few days. And, Holy yeah, so that's what happened. Yeah, really? Yeah, that's what happened. You got that gold, girl. You got that gold. You got that. Ooh hey, you trying to have him in the bushes. I'm so selfish now. I'm so selfish now because I don't like it. Well, whoever do get it, goddamn me, he going to be in the bushes. He going to be in the waiting on you. I don't Where know. you going, girl? Where you going? I don't need time for all of that, so I'm selfish right now. Nah, don't you want the man to be all into you though? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, is there anything else that we may have missed, or? Do you have any questions? Oh, do you have any questions for me? My questions for you is what's your what is your dream girl? My dream girl. Um, she's she's definitely dark skin. I like dark skin women. Shout out to the dark skin women. Um, out there. she gonna have a big old booty. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, I like big booty girls. Um, I'm trying to think of her hair. Is, is her hair being long and short important? Not really. If you can't, yeah. oh, what personality? Who wants to hear about personality? Hold on, I have something to say when you said about the hair being short or long. First of all, if you can't grow it, sew it. Okay. Oh, because there's always options. Yeah, it's saying. an option. If you can't grow it, sew it. <laughs> personality wise, I definitely. Does she have to be outgoing? No. I'm going to be outgoing. So I might be, be outgoing enough for the both of us. But I do need you just to be a little bit, golly, just a little bit outgoing. I need you to be able to, to, to conversate with other folks with me. Right. Um, I also want her, I want I would want her to have her phony mo moments. I want her to be pro, pro black. Like, I really want her to Shout have out her. to the black people. I want her there. to have her knowledge on, on history and be able to, you know, teach kids and so forth. Yeah. Um, I know pre being pro black pro black woman is really attractive to me. Uh, so I guess with that being said, I do like the all natural women's too. So, mm, yeah, y'all got me thinking. But I'm just coming out. Oh, I didn't even know why I like that. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, I don't know, man. Yeah, that's too hard of a question, man. Oh, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't think about. I mean, that. you gave us a lot of points. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. that's awesome. Anything else you may have? Hmm. 
What are you afraid of? What am I afraid of? First of all, I'm afraid of heights. That's off top. I don't you mess with and I, me both. I don't mess with roller coasters. <laughs> um, I'm yo, I am terrified of maggots. <laughs> I'm scared of maggots, like so for real. Like, I don't. I think it's because I was watching. There's a movie a long time ago called Species, mm -hmm. and what happened was a species in the movie. It was these things crawling up under her skin. It just freaked me out. Oh. And it just reminded me of maggots, and I just and maggots can do that. Maggots can crawl up under your skin if you have an infection. I guess you know, yeah. but. That just that no, I can't. I can't deal. Mm -mm, I die. Maggie on me. I'm just. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm, I'm dying. Yeah. So, yeah. That's, I, my experience in life. Yo, I think I'm. A, I think I'm afraid to fail. I know that. So, I don't know. That's the problem. To be honest, I think you should never be afraid to fail. You should bring that failure on you know what i'm saying like because once you fail you can learn from it correct, correct. So, but i i am scared to fail i want to i don't know i, I want to be good at what i do all the time exactly and sometimes it gets to the point where you're so afraid to fail that your anxiety kick in mm -hmm. and you can't sleep at night because you're always thinking about what is the next thing you can do to get you to where you're trying to go do you get do you get anxiety sometimes i do get anxiety How and do you, my uh, anxiety is like you know trying to take on so many things at one time but it's like i know my potential and where i'm sitting at is not where i want to be at so you have to keep going and my anxiety kicks in how do you uh calm down like how do you handle your anxiety um meditation Really? I meditate. I like meditate. Tina Turner, meditate. Yum, yum, yum. No, like, you're no. not going to catch me saying yum, 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 you know? Yes, that's what I was looking no, for. No, no, you're not going to catch me doing that. I actually, when at home, I sit there, I light some candles, I cut that light off, I dim it down a little bit, and I close my eyes, and I visualize what I want to do, and I visualize about peace, and I cut out that distraction and that noise, and I meditate. So, and pure meditate. silence. Pure silence. Oh, I will. I think... <clears throat> I know, cause my mind would wouldn't turn off. I'd probably be like thinking all types of things. Like, shut off, mind. Like, what when do you I do? meditate, um, I'm asking for relaxation. So you um, talking to God? Huh? You talking to God? Um, or are you talking to, to yourself? Talk to myself in the Most High. Um, mm -hmm. like I said, I feel in myself is the spirit. So I'm really talking to the spirit for relaxation, um, for patience, for understanding, and I ask for all those things, and I communicate with my spirit. Yeah. What's your um? What's your goal weight? What what is what is this your, your so we can all hold you accountable? You telling everybody now, so <laughs> now you got to do it. So My go ahead, and give it to me. My goal weight is to get down to one ninety. You guys, mm -hmm. by me being kind of tall for a female, which I'm only five seven, but um, the way my weight is, I look like I weigh less than what I weigh. Mm -hmm. I'm 205 pounds, mm -hmm. and I when I first started Herbalife, I was 245 pounds. Word. So, yeah, so I just only have a little left to go to get the 190. How do you maintain that once you get there? How do you maintain it once you get there? Well, first of all, no more binge eating. So mm. you can't be eating all this bad food and expect you to keep that weight down. So just to maintain is to also keep up with your diets. Um, every now and then you can have maybe a cheat day or two, but don't make the whole week full of cheating when eating. How much of your health is mental, like, as far as the mental health? Like, how much are you preparing to do the yeah, Does your mind have to be right to, to even do these types of things? It's all in the mind. Like, <clears throat> it's a lot of times where I have went to go work out. Like, this is the difference. You have to find out what helps your mental when I work out by myself, my mental tells me I can't do this and I'll be ready to give up. But when I work out with a crowd, that motivation from others, it helps my mental to keep going. So the mental does play a big part. And I will say about, for me, it's like 75% mental. Okay. So you're getting locked up, right? You're locked up on the island by yourself for 30 days. Mm -hmm. Top five songs is on your iPod. <clears throat> my iPod top five songs first song will be No Guidance by no, Chris Brown no I like and that Trey. Song. I like that song second okay. song will be Surrender by Cut Close okay. most people don't know who that is that's a group that uh, Keith Sweat signed back in the day in the 90s Okay. third song will be Maxwell Woman's Work oh my god it's so soothing to my soul Woman's Work it's Woman's Work no, no, Woman's Work, work. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 I 
the fourth song would definitely be um that I listen to. I love me some Mo Three, so it's a song called Mo3. Outside. Okay. <laughs> and then that fifth song would definitely be um R. Kelly. I'm sorry with all this controversy, but I love this song by R. Kelly called Slow Dance. Ooh, what I just thought about something. Okay, now I wouldn't know the name of the five songs, but I can name some of the artists that I do work out to. All right, go ahead. So for one, the first one will be an artist based out of um, Brookshire, Texas. His name is DJ Chose. DJ Chose music is real uppity. B King, B King is from Houston. His music is real. That's the one I had him with the cucumbers, huh? Got everybody <laughs> with the cucumbers. Everybody with the cucumbers. Woo! But yes, Shout out to B King. His music be having me. Oh yeah, I gotta get it. I'm sweating type stuff. Gotta get to the Cardi cucumber. Cardi B, press, 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 press. So yeah. she be having me going at it. Um. And then K Stylist, he's like a more booty shaking, twerking. So any type of that, you know, and I can't name the fifth one, but any type of music that's just uppity, like I can get to it and work it okay. out. Okay. One more question for you. Sure. I'll make sure anybody else got no questions. <clears throat> I want to know a time where you had, I really wanted to, in a, in a relationship, I really want this, but I think I'm being selfish. I just want the man to get some shine. <laughs> just name a time in your, in your life where you had to hold yourself accountable. All the time. There are times when I, I have to hold a myself Pacific, accountable. A Pacific. I really want you to tell me all the time where you had to tell your man, I'm sorry, babe. It was my fault. I had to hold myself just accountable. overthinking. So, I mean, you know, I was... So, oh, so that situation when you, was, when you was up in the room. Overthinking. <laughs> overthinking. But you didn't hold yourself accountable. You, you didn't come downstairs you know. and be like, I'm sorry, babe. I tried to catch you. But you weren't doing nothing. Yes, you think you know it all. You ready to catch that person or you just think they're lying and then it all blows up in your face. You have to take accountability for that. So for that, I do apologize. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, that works. I can, I can take that. I yeah. can take that. I have one more question for you. Um, and <laughs> Hopefully I'm ready. My question for you is what is your biggest addiction? <laughs> so it used to be cigarettes i used to quit i quit cigarettes okay so right now it has to be oh shit <laughs> i know right like <laughs> oh, you know what i want to say God. no it's it's, it's marijuana Marijuana is my number one addiction. <laughs> and the ladies! No, and swear. Ladies, let me find out you a womanizer. Um, am I a womanizer? I... What is a womanizer? A womanizer is like my ex. <laughs> no, no, no. I want to like... What is a womanizer? I, I don't like want to say I'm a womanizer. A womanizer is someone that just tell every female what she want to hear, and he go through so many well, women. Oh, okay. I say, what man doesn't? What, what, why would you I not mean, tell a woman what she want to hear? At the same time, you can't put down another woman when you know you have a woman because you're mm -hmm. trying to spare her feelings as well. Okay, well, yeah, when you have a woman. Yeah. Okay, but I mean, a, a single man. Even if he's not feeling that woman, he's still telling her what she want to hear. So that that's wrong. So you can't tell it every woman wrong. what you want to hear. Because I feel like you need to be truthful with the woman. Yeah. Yes, you have to be truthful either way it go. See, I'm the type of person I'm gonna tell you the truth even if it hurt. Yeah. But if you just telling them everything that they want to hear and you making them feel good when you know your so attention is to on. hurt them, so don't you're lead leading them, them on, on and your attention is to hurt them, then you're a womanizer. You're going through all these women. Both of my teachers not to hurt you. I just. Don't uh, keep it real. Keep it. Okay, G. I see what you're saying now. You almost made me say, I see what you're saying now. Tell her off. Yeah, tell it from the beginning. That's hard to it's tell a, a beautiful woman. What? How is it not? I want to hit it. You saying you want a relationship? It's hard for me to sit there and say, Nah, I don't want to ruin your life. Let me keep it moving. No. You could just keep it. You could just keep it honestly. Like when you start talking to a girl, if your intentions is to hit it, just you tell let her. her know. Tell her, hey, I'm really attracted to you. Hey, I really want to hit it. Sure, get out my face. 
anything no, about a relationship. Anything about a relationship, you have to keep it honest with her from the beginning. If she decided to get her feelings caught up, mm -hmm. you cannot be accountable for that because you already told her from the beginning, this is what I so want. So tell the woman the truth. But the That's a setup, y'all, fellas. The moment you sit up there and try to leave her on is the moment you become Exactly. I guess. I don't know. I think I think women can't handle the truth at most. I don't know, man. You really? For real? For real? Tell them the truth? Exactly. I, can I know our egos are so fair now. I can respect a man to come up to me and say, hey, I got a woman, but I'm attracted to you. I might tell him no. Nine times out of ten, I what, am. Ooh, ooh, what if he say, I got a woman, but she's okay with it? She's okay with it? She's okay with it. Now, honestly, I don't do the polygamy thing. Ah! But there are some women out there that will be okay with that. You are know, they so wrong? Are they wrong? In your opinion, are they wrong? But no, they they're not wrong. Okay. If okay. they have okay. that open relationship and their woman is okay with another woman stepping uh -huh. in, uh -huh. they're doing everything right. Their loyalty is with each other. Now, they're going to ask the woman, and then if the woman may want to be, she may be down with it. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people don't like to own up to that. You know what I'm saying? They feel like they're going to be judged or whatever the so case no is. no polygamy for you. No polygamy Ever? for me. I'll do a polygamy if I can have two boyfriends, but I wouldn't want them that, talking to each you, other. That's, give me a high five. Oh, my oh, gosh. I, I love it. I, you know what? That would be polyamorous. That's polyamorous? Polyamorous. Okay. 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 Well, yeah, I can do that, but I would I want, like, yeah. Y'all, she kept it real, y'all. Because most women wouldn't say that. I'm like, yo, I know as men, we are two women, two women. I know it wouldn't be one and two men. Like, come on. Like, <laughs> come on. Like, like, why wouldn't you? Like, <laughs> shit. Okay. You know, they always say you got to have a, a one man for one type of thing. Right. This is a, he's a rough good. one, yeah. and he's a, he makes love to me. That there you go. sounds... Amazing. Jason probably good at paying the bills while Timothy over here, he fixed my car. Oh, so you like white men. Steven over Jason here. Jason and, and Timothy sound like white men to me. Oh! <laughs> you got jungle fever over there. First of all, I do know some black Jasons. Oh, okay. So uh -huh. I do know a black Timothy as well. Okay, I, I know one too. Okay, I guess you're right. I guess you're right. <laughs> I just want to see. I try, I try to catch up in it. What do you mean? What do you mean? As they ask questions about each other. Oh, don't fall for that, sis. If if you have two men, wait, wait, wait. You're not ready for the answer. If you have two men and they ask you who's a better lover, do not fall for that, ladies. It's bull. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. <laughs> I'll be more so. Don't ask. You're gonna be honest. You're, not ready for you're gonna be honest. Oh, I'm a that's a good response. No, nah, see, if you tell me, don't ask me a question, and you and you don't want to. Be, that lets me know I'm the weak one. <laughs> because you ain't little for real. You already let me know without letting me know. <laughs> mm -mm. I think I said don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. Okay, one last time. Any, any, anything, anything we missed? Um, no, I really don't have any other questions. But I do want to give a message out to the audience out there. If anybody out there know anybody that is depressed or going through anything. Keep y'all head up. If you're trying to reach somewhere far in life and you feel that you cannot make it, you can do it. The biggest enemy is yourself. So once you conquer yourself, you will get far. And don't get comfortable in where you're at. Because we have so many people that's so comfortable at sitting at home, not doing shit, when they can get up and do things. Do not blame others for what you decide to do in your life. Do not play victim. Let's sit there and take care of this ourselves. Fix our own problems. And that's all I have to say. Damn. Wow, wow. <laughs> hey, y'all, y'all feeling depressed? Hit up, get hit up her DMs. Y'all blow, hell, blow hell. up her DMs. She may charge y'all now. No stalkers. <clears throat> oh, no, no stalkers. No stalkers. All right, y'all. This is Radioactive, y'all. Peace. <laughs> Bye. That was amazing.